In this example, we have a fish and we're asked to determine if the flow over the fish is laminar or turbulent or a combination of the two. That's part A here. And then part B is to calculate the total drag acting on the fish, assuming skin friction drag dominates. So basically just assume that we only have skin friction drag. And we're going to model the fish shape as being a thin, flat, rectangular plate, just for simplicity. So you can see our picture of our, our rectangular fish, um, obviously an approximation. And then part C is to calculate the power required for the fish to swim at the given conditions. The given conditions are given right up here. We're told the swimming speed and the, the area on one side of the fish, the length of the fish, and then uh, this is a saltwater fish, so uh, we're given the conditions for saltwater. So let's first uh, address part A and determine if the flow over the length of the fish is laminar, turbulent, or a combination of the two. Show the work supporting your answer. So for that one, we're actually going to calculate a Reynolds number based on the fish's length. So the Reynolds number based on the length of the fish, this is L here, will just be the velocity of the fish. This is the swimming speed of 0.3 meters per second times the length. So we're trying to find what the Reynolds number is at the back part of the fish to see whether it's laminar or turbulent. And then divided through by the kinematic viscosity of the salt water. So if we plug in the numbers, this is 0.3 meters per second for the velocity. The length of the fish is 0.195 meters. And we're told that the viscosity for salt water is 1.19 times 10 to the minus 6 square meters per second. So we can plug in those numbers, and what we'll find is that the Reynolds number is 49,200. So that keeps us in the laminar regime. So the flow over the entire fish will be laminar. So now that brings us to part B, and that's to calculate the total drag acting on the fish. Well, now that we know that the flow is laminar, we can go ahead and use the drag coefficient for laminar boundary layer flow. We'll use the Blasius solution, which is the laminar boundary layer flow over a flat plate. There's no pressure gradient on it. And to find the drag, Remember that there are two sides to this fish, so the drag on two sides of the fish will be, of course, two times the drag on one side. And the drag on one side will be the drag coefficient times the dynamic pressure based on the free stream speed times the area of one of the sides. So the area, we'll call this distance W, and then we said the length of the fish was L. Remember, we're modeling this as a uh, rectangular plate, so the area would be L times W. So this is the drag acting on one side of the fish. And we know everything in that expression except for the C sub D, the drag coefficient. So the drag coefficient, since the flow is laminar, will be the Blasius solution drag coefficient. So we can go back to our notes from lecture and find that the drag coefficient for a laminar boundary layer is 1.328 divided by the Reynolds number based on the length of the fish, and then we square root that Reynolds number. So that's how you'd find the, the drag coefficient. If you use that Reynolds number we calculated up here of 49,200 and plug that in, you'll get that the drag coefficient is 5.99 times 10 to the minus 3. And then we can use that drag coefficient with the information we were given up here near the, the top of the page to calculate what the drag force will be. So if we do that, we'll get the drag on one side is 5.72 times 10 to the minus 3 newtons, and the drag on two sides then will just be that times 2, 1.14 times 10 to the minus 2 newtons. And then the last part, part C, is to determine the power required for the fish to swim at the given conditions. So the power will just be the drag on both sides times the speed of the fish. So we can plug in the numbers for that, and then you'll get that this comes out to be 3.43 milliwatts. So not a lot of power, which makes a lot of sense because, uh, you know, if it required a lot of power for the fish to swim, then it would have to eat quite a bit, which wouldn't be uh, advantageous, evolutionarily speaking. So anyway, that's, a, that's just a, a very rough back-of-the-envelope calculation for the drag and the power required for the fish to swim. 
There actually is a, a nice paper on boundary layer characteristics for flow over swimming fish. And that paper is given by Anderson. I'll just make a note here. It's by Anderson et al., meaning that there are other authors, 2001. And it's called The Boundary Layer of Swimming Fish. It's in the Journal of Experimental Biology. Journal of Experimental Biology. Volume 204 and pages 81 through 102. So that this, uh, this problem actually was inspired by that particular paper. So if you're curious to know more about boundary layer characteristics over, over swimming fish, that's a good paper to refer to. All right, we'll go ahead and end the example there.